All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming into June 19th, 2019, and this is the day we've all been waiting for. We said on Monday it is going to be a historic week. It started out like that. It, you know, everything we're coming into, the rates, all that. What did we say? Oh, that's for today. But yesterday we said watch the volume. It was extremely above average today comparative to the last five days. But we said watch up for that gap up. I said excel the rip, and it did happen, but not as much. Again, we still closed 353 points up. That is one of the largest gains we've had in a while, and now we are right below all-time highs. It is a very interesting situation for tomorrow. What is everybody in the world waiting for? The Federal Reserve Open Market Committee. There they will make their interest rate decision, and we've talked about it in the videos. You know, We could see bond rates. We're going to bring that up. But here's the investing.com. You know, this is a prediction of what's going to happen based on where the bonds are at. And surprisingly, it's 75, 25%. They're going to stay the same. People are expecting that. However, we don't know. This could be, we're going to talk about this when we get to the keys. This is the next FOMC in July. So we'll see what happens. But again, the key is the market will, the Fed for the last 30 years in a row, they will always do whatever the market predicts above 60%. So keep that in mind and, and how everything is adjusting. But the biggest thing for tomorrow is going to be the Fed. So again, that's going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And now people are waiting. So let's just get straight to the keys for tomorrow. But before I get into that, I actually have something really important, you guys. We are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. You hear that a lot, but actually, please like this video and make sure you're subscribed to the main channel and like that tomorrow and be active. It seems like a lot of people are saying, hey, I'm not seeing your, my videos anymore, all this, so please like the video so you don't miss anything. Turn on the bell, interact, but again, most importantly, post your watch list below, long-term, short-term, anything. Just give context and clarification. Shout out all the people who are doing it. I, I love and appreciate you guys. You're amazing. I'm excited to what we're about to get into, so I want to make sure you are guided and ready to go. So the keys for tomorrow, it is the treadmill, my friends. And what does that mean? A lot of movement to go nowhere. So picture a treadmill. That is going to be the key. I'm going to discuss this a little bit more in depth. But the Fed is cool and all, but watch oil. That is still going to be the key. Do not forget because that's still going to be related to the dollar. The dollar is getting pushed by trade war and bonds and you know it, it, again the rate's going to come into that but don't underestimate the impact of oil and what we're watching there because it still made a big move market went with it but it's it's still following that same pattern from december that's where it's leading me into this theory we have here the market isn't going to crash tomorrow on the fed so i know a lot of people are thinking that and they're like oh wow you know again it's like i said the reaction is always worse until it happens if i say yo let's fight man i'm gonna fight you meet me at the park that is you're gonna have your heart beating all the way up until you get there and then you're like dude josh is like five foot six yeah okay even if i you know i'm pretty swole but you're like all right hit me in the face it didn't even feel like it didn't even hurt that much it, it, the reaction isn't going to be that big but there will be volume uh just again you're going to get the algos and everything else doing that but it's going to move up and down a lot. You know, the key is going to be the Tuesday opening from last week. So coming here, this is what I'm talking about. This Tuesday, the 11th, we've seen this many times. You've heard me talk about it, but really watch for it to break. This is where I was saying if we had to sell the rip and it broke that today, that would have been bad. So we could either gap down to this. We might gap above or below, or it could be another sell the rip thing. And it, it might kind of cuck here at the top. But again, it's hard to really speculate given the Fed, but we're probably not going to we're going to get a move in the morning. And then after that move, the real volume and the, the real action is going to come after the meeting. But that isn't going to cause the bigger move. And, and what I'm saying is that the real moves are going to lead till Thursday and Friday and something else. But throughout the intraday, if our theories are going to change or adjust, I'm watching this level from that Tuesday close. And then the, it's going to pretty much put us in this range for 291 to 287 until what I think will be the kicker. Those, that opening is going to be the defense pretty much till the weekend and then till the next week. But the Fed is so hyped tomorrow, and it's not because of what they're going to do. You know, the, people don't care if, if they cut rates or, you know, people, a lot of people are focused on that. Oh, they're going to cut rates, this and that. Again, I showed you the predictions and what the bond market is pricing. It's not going to happen, but, you know, there is key notes to take from this, which I, I included here at the end, but the action isn't going to cause a move or a downturn. So whatever Jerome Powell announces, even the press conference, it's not going to be that, but it's going to be the resulting reaction to all those stuff. Again, like oil, the dollar, the bond rates, but ultimately now the year, the yield curve, the reaction, I'm saying it will cause the two year and 10 year to invert. Given what I'm seeing here, 
if uh, pretty much how the market is set up and it's so it's so confusing right now I think it doesn't matter what is said. We are going to get something interpreted. Powell might come out with another tool. We'll see what he does. But the, the chances of getting disappointed either way, you're, you're up there. You know, picture it like LeBron James. He was co- the best in the league coming in there. And, and again, I'm using this as an example. For example, say, shout out Kobe Bryant, baby. Let's go. Stay in the game. But there's no pleasing people. You know, it doesn't matter. It, he could go drop 100 points a game. They're going to say he didn't win a championship. If he wins a championship, they're going to say it's because of the teammates or this and that. They're going to say he only won one championship. And that's kind of the attitude we're getting from a lot of people here and investors. And, and again, it's, it's reflected through the bonds where I just don't – I think people are, are still worried unless there is something really material that's going to be beneficial. We'll see what happens. But – the reaction is going to cause the two and 10 year to invert. And that is the real yield curve inversion. The three month and the two year are higher now, or the three month is higher now than the, the 10 year, but that's controlled by the federal reserve. So it doesn't matter. The real open market inversion occurs with the two year and 10 year. And that's what I'm saying. That's going to cause the downturn. That is when the market reacts. So the move here, either the overly dovish, overly hawkish, some sort of move, and then given a few days to digest, it's going to invert the curve that will be it. And then the market's going to react a little bit and it could bounce from there because again, well, again, it all depends on the policy. But at the end of the day, this is what I'm saying. Screw the rates. Screw what I think. Anything could happen. Everyone in the world can be surprised tomorrow. Look at the ECB today and the threats against Powell. The ECB came out with rate hikes. It it shot up their market. And you guys, you know, we talked about it a lot on stream. I don't want to get, I want to get into the play. So I don't want to spend too much time discussing that. But the, that was pretty surprising, and even Europe doing that, it, it's kind of even going to force our hand, or it potentially could, but we've always been very distinctly different from them. However, at the same time now, Trump, and there was news that the White House was exploring to get rid of Powell. We did move today on positive uh, news that there would be a potential meeting, and it, it was very weird, and Lighthizer even had follow-ups, you know, same typical pump, and then, you know, confusion afterwards, said by he said, she said, advisor said this. But the fact that even Powell, that even came up, that Trump was trying to get rid of him, that is going to add a lot of pressure. I think it puts Powell in a weird spot. It, it puts him in a really, really weird spot, honestly. And, and who knows what's going to happen now? And I think even the day before, it's, it, that's just something crazy. So again, you don't know what is going to happen. Tomorrow is very, very unique for that. But I'm saying with safety and caution, I've, I've lived through a lot of these events. And again, hist- it's history in the making. It's going to be a historic week. We don't know what's going to happen. It already is. But don't get too jumpy because even if there is a shock, so if he does surprise, that's still going to take time to digest. But those are going to be the keys for tomorrow, you guys. Please be safe. Be smart. Control your expectations. Come to the stream, ask your questions, post your plays. I got your back. Hopefully you got mine. So you better post your watch list and be active. But let us get into our plays. So Facebook made a big move. Again, kind of like Beyond Meat today. And that was was a nice one we liked. But this was, it it was just crazy. It gapped up another 3% this morning and then just sold off right away. So that was weird, even though tech was still a leader, which was surprisingly, but a lot of things moved in tandem and Facebook did its thing. But here's the thing I want to highlight with Facebook. I did a put spread on it today or a put butterfly to show uh, Mr. Finra there. Uh, You know, have no fear with the selling premium and managing your risk. But look at the size of these candles now. You're starting to see big movements out of Facebook when traditionally... It has been moving like a value stock. Some Something's brewing there. The volume's picking up. I like it. And again, pay attention to the volume there on the market. But keep Facebook now. We'll see how it plays out. But the contracts are really, really messed up. Next play is going to be T-Mobile. We got a call. I've lost on it every single time I've chased this news. But again, it's happened so many times. That's why I keep going after it because that's how these deals work back and forth, back and forth till eventually it, it's going to it's gonna stick. But Dish announced they're looking at like $6 billion to buy them. Dish actually ended up selling off. You know, they had their big pop came down. I got a call on there for July and it, it was pretty good. But I'm going to keep an eye on that. You could watch Sprint as a sympathy. So those are going to be a good plays. Another one with news, Allergen. I got into this one. And again, I need you guys to post your plays on here. This was a good lesson with snaking the spreads and finding options to play during volatility. But they had their conference call and announced that they were going to do a split. It got confirmed. It made a move. Allergen has been down a lot. So that was a pretty nice pop for them. But I like that. I am worried about worried about the overall just healthcare sector in general. So watch that. Lastly, for this slide here, or this chart, TLT is an interesting one to watch with the bonds. But again, 
I love it when they start going up and doing this red and dropping because they could still move in the direction we want. And if there is any sort of inverse move that the volatility causes, it could crush the premium and set us up. But I'm still in a longer play on there with a butterfly that's weighted towards the top end. And then lastly, drip. It falls in the same line. So watch oil. I love that it's capitulating here. It is going to get cheaper, but that option chain is a lot harder to play. As far as here now, we could start. Here's Biogen. I accidentally made a play on them today because I was going after Regen, but both of them are at pretty killer spots, but I, I am more inclined. You know, Biogen just dropped. It's staying there. Again, that was from the failed drug or they, you know, one of their main drugs lost and it's been down there. So again, it is a biotech and we'll see. Earnings is coming up right around the corner too, you guys, around July 26th. So keep that in mind. You could be playing stuff right now and you could also be getting earnings exposure. So be smart about that. But now here's Regen. I really love this spot on Regen. And again, it has a little mix of Biogen, but open market and a lot of stuff. I did butterflies both ways on this, or excuse me, vertical spread. So instead of butterflies, and someone even asked, do you only do butterflies? Do you only post that on the stream alerts? No. If you guys haven't noticed, it's all dependent on using different tools for different market environments and to achieve different goals. You know, when there's cuck fest, we're using those butterflies. They help us get our hand in the cookie jar. Here, I'm expecting something, and there's volatility, or, or it's weighted again, like regen. I did the put vertical on it because it's so down. Puts are expensive. I sold, I bought a put and then you go three, four strikes below it and sell the other put so that the shittier put finances the better one. That's pretty much what I did, but I did that calls and puts. But I really like regen. Keep it on your radar, you guys. This could move like a UNH, but a little better. But watch UNH and even all those health cares. Watch Boeing. They got an order today. And I have a good play on it. I need them to close below 377. And I'll, I'll, I literally will be, you guys will get to see it $12 into about 750. If it pretty much, if Boeing stays above 372 uh, by Friday, or yeah, I think three, or no, no, 365, and then lower than 377. Uh, I will make it'll be 12. That was a butterfly. See? So that would have been $12 into around 700 bucks. But watch them. They had the order. It was a late reaction, but this was a huge move. But guess what? If Boeing moved $20, 5.5%, yikes. That means the Dow didn't really do too good today. And, and watch those industrial and slow mover stocks and those value stocks we've talked about. Lastly, here on this chart, Intel. This is one of those stocks I'm talking about. It had a big move. This is related to Qualcomm, the chip makers, but had a monster move in the morning. Watch this, you guys, because we've kind of been ignoring it for the last few days. But again, this is a low volatility one. It's starting to get big candles. We want to take advantage of this, but I'm a big, big fan of Intel there. And I think it's going to be a good one to keep on watch. Lastly, our last favorite three beyond insane move today. It came down. Uh, I was baffled by that play considering just how the option values change. So be careful, but I still think it's in the game. I want, I want to probably try to snag a weekly on this. Um, you know, tomorrow we'll see push this one to the wall, but I'm not going to be too aggressive considering the plays. I have a pretty good setup on there, but I do want zoom. I'm pushing this to the wall. I'm going to try to do a call spread on it like one of those verticals, but I am a hesitant to see what it does on the calls, but I kind of want to see it either break off from the market or break off from beyond. And then when it, when that happens, I think it'll do its thing, but still one of my favorite stocks this week, we might have to push it into next week, but you know, I, I think we might see something. And then McDonald's lastly, very, very telling move where the market is. It gave us a lot of stuff, but keep your eyes out for it because 204, 205, it's still hovering there. Again, same thing with kind of Zoom. You want to see how McDonald's reacts, but watch now the value stocks in relation to now Boeing's effect on the Dow and then the overall Dow move in general. So again, look for laggers and leaders tomorrow. Watch the banks. Those are going to be ones you really want to set up. If anything, the Fed, those are going to give more confusing moves and you'll see that. But so I'm going to leave it there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have option plays for you, but I'm going to hold them hostage because I'm going to say, come to the stream tomorrow and ask about them. Drop your like on the video and make sure you guys are interacting, keeping it positive, sourced information, keep your energy up, man. And again, I got, you know, it was a blessing in disguise to get sick. I got sick to rest me up and, you know, I didn't get caught up in the cuck and now I'm ready to go. So I want you guys there. If you took losses, don't you know, how pain affects people is differently, but don't let that distract you from the plan. Stop focusing on what you did or didn't do and focus on what you need to do to protect yourself and get yourself positioned for the opportunity to hit you and slap you in the face. That's what you want. Just be, you know, just be there. That's all you guys got to do. You're on the stream. You be there. That's it. So I love you guys. I'm going to see you in the morning. I hope you're ready. Let's go.